Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.11, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 10, Laser Guided Bombs. Today I'm going to demonstrate the use of the Paveway 2 class weapons, which the Hornet can carry. Uh, that is the GBU-10, which is a £2,000 class bomb uh, based on the Mark 84 the GBU-12, which is a £500 class bomb based on the Mark 82, and the GBU-16, which is a £1,000 class bomb based on the Mark 83. The Hornet can also carry the GBU-24, but I won't be ca uh, covering that in this mission because that's a Paveway 3 class weapon and it operates in a slightly different way. Uh, and all of these Paveway 2 weapons I've already demonstrated on other aircraft, and so the, the method of operation is fairly similar, uh, but of course the Hornet has some quirks to its avionics, and we're using the AT Fleur targeting pod in this uh, example to designate uh, the, the targets for ourselves. We're going to self-designate today, but of course with laser-guided weapons it is possible to receive laser, uh, buddy lasing from other aircraft, and it's also possible to receive a laser designation uh, from a JTAC or other ground forces. So, uh, the Paveway 2 laser-guided bombs on the Hornet can be carried on the wing stations. Those are stations 8, 7, 3 and 1, corresponding to the inner and outer wing pylons as seen here. All of the weapons can be carried singly, so on, on any of those stations you can carry single GBU-10s, 12s or 16s. Or you can mount the BRU-33 rack, as you can see here on my inner wing station, and on that rack you can carry two GBU-12s. You can't carry any of the other heavier versions of the Paveway 2 on the rack. So in today's loadout I've got uh, two GBU-12s on each inner station, and I've got single GBU-16s, sorry no, actually GBU-10s in fact, on the outer wing stations. Those very, very big chappies. So, let's jump into the cockpit and let's get set up in order to drop these weapons. Um, let's, uh, actually, very first thing we're going to do, we're going to select air to ground master mode, master arm to on, and then down here at the sensor control panel on the right console, we're going to turn on the laser target designator, because we're going to be using that today. I'm going to leave the laser spot tracker off, uh, but you would use that if you were looking for a spot provided by another aircraft or, or ground forces. I'm also going to hide my stick just so I can see my uh, EHSD uh, more easily. So on the right hand multifunction display I'm going to press menu, I'm going to bring up FLIR and that shows us the pod. I'm actually going to adjust the brightness a little bit so that we can read it somewhat better. And uh, then we're going to focus down on the left-hand multifunction display because here we've got the stores management system. So you can see the profiles across the top as always. Uh, in the Hornet, the GBUs are actually shown based on their dumb bomb um, kind of profile names. So the, uh, the GBU-10 is actually showing up as an 84 because it's a Mark 84, LG for laser guided, and the GBU-12 is showing up as a Mark 82 LG because it's based on the Mark 82. Let's choose the 82 first and you'll note that it shows it's not ready and this box here with four crosses is flashing. Now that's because each bomb individually needs to be programmed for its laser code um, so we need to do this before we're actually going to employ them. But I'll go through all of the settings first and, and keep in mind as I've demonstrated before we have multiple profiles we could actually program multiple, uh, sorry, programs, in fact, for each of these weapons profiles. I'm just going to use the one. So I'm going to use program number one, mode. You have the option of auto, which is synonymous with CCRP, FD, CCIP, and manual. We're going to do auto. There's not really any reason to drop laser-guided bombs in any other mode, to be honest. Now, laser-guided bombs don't have uh, mechanical fuses, but they have electronic fuses. So we, if we choose E-Fuse, we've got options for off, instantaneous, and delayed detonation. Note that the E-Fuse defaults to off or safe, so you're going to need to set this before you drop them, otherwise there'll be a dud. I'm going to go with instantaneous, and then the last option we have is code. If I press code, I get the option code on the UFC. I can select that, 
and I'm going to enter 1677 today, which is the laser code that this bomb is going to search for. If we step to the next weapon, you'll note that all the settings are retained except the code. We need to program the code for every single bomb. So 1677 for this bomb as well, and now it indicates ready. That bomb could now be dropped. Let's choose the Mark 84 profile and also get it ready. We're going to go mode, automatic, e-fuse, instantaneous, and code 1677. That one now also reports ready. Stepping to the final bomb, 1677, enter. All of our bombs are now programmed. I'm going to start by dropping one Mark 84. I'm just going to step back to the left-hand one. And note the code here is actually flashing. Now, why is that? Well, if we look over at the targeting pod, we'll probably get a bit of a, uh, a clue as to why that is. Laser tes uh, target designator rangefinder is also flashing, and its code is 1688. So straight away, we can see our problem here. The aircraft is warning us that the code the bomb will look for and the code that we're going to emit do not match. Now, of course, if you're receiving buddy lasing, that's perfectly legitimate. We're going to self-designate today, so we need those to match. So on the AT FLIR pod, we need to press UFC. We need to choose laser target designator code and enter 1677 and press enter. Note that it's now no longer flashing. And also on the store's management system, it's also no longer flashing. They now match and they'll work correctly. So that's great. Let's unbox UFC and let's go and find our target. So uh, I have a target at waypoint one that I want to hit. So let's select waypoint one using the HSD. We can see it's a point to our front. We're going to choose waypoint designate. The pod will immediately slew to that location. And we're now looking at the target area. Uh, let's go ahead and press sensor select switch to the right. And you'll notice we now have the diamond at the top right hand uh, corner here. And we can go ahead and uh, zoom this in. I'm going to go narrow and we can slew it. And uh, slew it over our target. I've pressed uh, sensor select switch to the right again, by the way. Uh, and I've put it into scene, uh, inertial uh, scene mode. Let's actually choose this hangar here. I'm going to press sensor select switch to the right one more time, and it's in automatic. Cool. That's now all set. So we're on laser code 1677. At the top, we can confirm that the laser is armed. We then have the control for the manual mode of the laser, otherwise known as trigger. If I box trigger, the laser will fire whenever I pull the gun trigger. You'll notice I pulled it there. We're now emitting the laser code. However, when you're dropping your own weapon, you actually really just want to leave this in automatic. So unbox trigger, and what will happen is the, uh, the laser will fire automatically at the correct time. Also note on the right hand side of the targeting pod, we have distance to the target, 9.6 uh, nautical miles, and time until release, 70 seconds. Okay, I'm going to come back up to the heads up display now, where we have the ASL, otherwise known as the azimuth steering line. I'm going to bring the aircraft out of uh, active pause, and we're going to continue towards the target. So, uh, also confirmed on the HUD we have here, uh, target is coming from the FLIR, or the targeting pod. Uh, our delivery mode is automatic, and we've got time until release. So let's continue inbound. I'm just going to continue to fly to put my flight path marker on the ASL. Once the, the line comes down, once the release cue comes down, I'm going to push and hold uh, my pickle and automatically drop that bomb. Getting a bit of cloud in the way. Hopefully we clear that soon enough so that we can actually do a proper BDA. We also have confirmed at the top of the, the HUD laser arm there as well. Okay, I'm pushing and holding pickle. The line flashes to confirm release, and the bomb is away. We need to trim us left a bit there. Aircraft really wants to roll over. That's a pretty big bomb. So you'll see we've got six seconds to laser. Five, four, three, two, one. One, laser is firing, and we have time to impact. Waiting for that to happen, and we should have impact now. We're actually in cloud, so we didn't see it. 
Uh, but as soon as we're out of cloud, I'm actually going to maneuver. There we go. That was a direct hit. That target is now destroyed. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit and let's do the same thing again. Uh, but this time we'll drop one of the Mark 82s. So I select the Mark 82 profile. It's reporting ready. Code is set. And uh, let's bring ourselves around for another strike. And in fact, we probably want to roll to the right, given the position of the pod. And you'll notice the laser has turned off again. Uh, and one other thing to note is that the laser has switched itself off. It's completely in safe mode now. So we need to enable it again because we swapped weapon. And I'm going to pop this into a... Yeah, I'm going to leave it in the wide field of view, in fact. So we're not seeing anything just yet. Let's continue to come around. Actually roll it over a bit more. Let's get there quicker. Should be out of masking in just a moment and we'll choose another target and drop there we go let's this time choose this particular location and again i've put it into automatic let's bring us all the way around onto the asl 38 seconds to release Now, of course, because it's a laser-guided bomb, uh, it, we don't have to have the, the CCRP incredibly accurate. Uh, actually, let me step this bomb to drop from the right-hand rack, because uh, we've already dropped a very big munition on the left there. Let's see if we can balance ourselves out a bit better. Ten seconds to release. Line is coming down. I'm pushing and holding pickle. GBU is away. Okay, 15 seconds to the laser. Laser is firing. We now have uh, just a few seconds until impact. Let's watch the bomb go and do its thing. And that's exactly on target. 1GBU-12 on that hangar. That's done the trick nicely. And you'll see, uh, once again, the laser has turned itself off and actually completely gone back into safe. That is a full demonstration of how that works. So that was the, the GBU-10 and the GBU-12, uh, but the GBU-16 operates in exactly the same fashion. Nice and easy to operate and very, very similar to the other aircraft that I've already demonstrated. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.